Mariners win nine to five. They improve to 69 and 66 on the season, and they take the first of a three game series against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Go over the scoring place. First inning, I'm going to need to take a drink afterwards. I'm going to be tired. Julio Rodriguez and Randy Rosarina score on an air by Zach Neto. 2 0. Mitch Garver doubles to left to score Jorge Polanco and Justin Turner. And Victor Robles singles home Dylan Moore. 5 0 in the middle of the first. Angels get two in the first. Taylor Ward hits a leadoff homer to make it 5 1. And Nolan Shanuel hits a sacrifice fly to score Zach Neto. 5 2. Fourth inning. Julio Rodriguez homers to center to score J.P. Crawford 7-2 to in the middle of the fourth. Fifth inning, another couple of runs. George Kirby gives up solo homers to Mickey Moniak and Brandon Jury to make it 7-4. to Sixth inning, Brandon Jury singles to center to score Nolan Shanuel to make it 7-5. But all Mariners from that point, Victor Robles reaches on an infield single to score Jorge Polanco. That's 8-5. And in the eighth, Justin Turner hits a sacrifice fly to score Julio. 9-5, Mariners win. Wow. That's a lot of scoring plays. You know, for 14 runs, it seems like there were like 11 scoring plays. Usually, you know, there's like a bunch of three-run homers and stuff like that. Let's see how many there were. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's a lot. That is a lot. Negatives. For those of you new to the channel, we always, on a win, we start with the negative. When it's a loss, we start with the positive, and then we work towards, you know, the ultimate goal. Uh, gosh dang it, Astros. Come on. Stop it. Come on, Kansas City. You know, they've been good games, but we need Kansas City to start helping out. We need the Astros to start losing some baseball games. And by we, I don't just mean Seattle Mariner fans. We, <laughs> I mean baseball fans. Aren't you guys tired of seeing them too? I know you are. I know you are. You can respect the heck even with the, the scandal, their success, but no. No, no, no. Uh, negative Mariner related. JP drew a couple of walks, but his timings looked pretty off. Um, I think, oh, Big Dumper had a really bad game. Big Dumper had a bad offensive game. And then the obvious negative is just George Kirby has not looked good. You know, this is three out of four starts where he has struggled. He did have a good start against the Pirates, but before that was the 11-run debacle, and I know it ended up being only a six-run debacle according to ERA. Tells you everything you need to know about ERA because George Kirby deserved to give up every single one of those runs. It was it was a very poor performance, and today was bad too. Just the two strikeouts, three homers. He's just catching too much of the plate right now. and. If the season ended today, I think your playoff rotation right now is Luis Castillo, Brian Wu, and Logan Gilbert. And Bryce Miller, maybe. And George Kirby is great. George Kirby has been very, very good for most of the year. But if you had to go with guys right now, how could you say no to that three? In particular, Wu. Can't do it. And the way Bryce Miller's pitched lately, too, it's a good problem to have. The Seattle Mariners starting pitching is so dang good. But George Kirby was not good today. And it's a little concerning that the last month or so of starts have been not necessarily where you want them to be. You know who I know is always in the right spot? Such a bad transition. Simply Seattle. Go to www.simplyseattle.com, save 15% off your order using code MOLLYWAP15, M-O-L-L-Y-W-H-O-P-1-5. Take 15% off your order. It's a great deal from great people. Thank you so much, Simply Seattle. Link in the description. Great stuff, of course, for the Mariners, Seahawks, Kraken. You know the deal. Thank you so much, Simply Seattle. Okay, so George Kirby wasn't good. The bullpen was. Now, JT Chargois does give up the hit but he gets out of the inning. Very nice job from Austin Voth, Voth, Vith. I say it different every time, it seems like, but he was very good. Trent Thornton scares the crap out of me every time he's in, but he gets the job done. And Troy Taylor, man. Now, look, I don't want to toot my horn too much, 
but my wine enthusiasts know I've been talking of Troy Taylor all year. Like well before there was consideration for Troy Taylor to come up. I'm a big fan of that guy's stuff. And sure, a four run game is not exactly high leverage, but nice to get a win where you don't have to use Colin Snyder, where you don't have to use Andres Munoz and nice to get a win where your starting pitching isn't up to the, up to snuff. Nice to have that indeed. Uh, but really nice job for the bullpen. Three and a third innings of scoreless baseball. Gave up two hits. Only struck out two. Who cares? Got the job done. Uh, offensively, a bunch of guys. Like, look, J.P. Crawford drew a couple of walks. Uh, Randy Rosarina, a couple of hits. Justin Turner with an RBI in a hit. Uh, Mitch Garver. Good for you, Mitch. Good for you, man. Gets that big two-run double. You know, it would have felt disappointing if you only get out of that inning with a couple of runs or leave that middle of the inning with a couple of runs. You know what I meant. Why are you fighting me on this? No, it was great to see Mitch Garver contribute because he has not contributed very much this year. But a couple of hits in this one, that big RBI double to score two gives you the 4 nothing lead, basically guarantees that you're going to have the big inning. Uh, Victor Robles. Don't think Victor Robles should be leading off, but he's looked very comfortable. Now, look, one of those hits went about 12 feet. Who cares? Make contact. Good things happen. Put your wheels. Steals another bag. I believe he's 21 now. Gosh, it's hard to overstate how much Victor Robles has helped the Seattle Mariners. You know, unfortunately, you may not remember in the long term, how much good Victor Robles did because of the fact that while he was good, everyone else stunk. For the most part, you know, he had a little something to do with their run uh, where they got to 44 and 31, but 43 and 31, excuse me. Victor Robles, super glad to have him in the organization the next couple of years. And of course, Julio. Great to see him drive that baseball. Great to see the three walks. You know, some people gave me crap about the my thing about how Julio relies on timing. And look, I shouldn't have said more than anyone. And that's not exactly what I said. But I should have said relies more than most on timing. That's what I was trying to say. I don't have an edit button. Didn't think any of it of it. But apparently it really infuriated a lot of you. It's pretty obvious what Julio Rodriguez can do when his timing is right. That talent is just spectacular. And we have seen Julio Rodriguez go on runs. And boy, oh boy, runs feels like we're talking, and I'm going to age myself here, we're talking 1991 UNLV, 1991 UNLV running Rebels runs. He When he is hot, and I know that there's not a lot of proof to this, according to a lot of analysts that, you know, the hot hand fallacy, blah, 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 blah. When he's been hot, it has been scorching hot. The type of hot that melts people. And I'm really hoping, and it's looked like it over the last couple of days, that maybe this is the start of one of those runs. Because, boy, they need it. Uh, I think we should take a look at the standings at the end of all of these videos now. Um, it would help if ESPN wasn't absolutely unviewable when you have it in a side window. Just unbelievable to me that ESPN still hasn't figured that out. So, you're four games back of the Houston Astros. That because of the fact that the Astros won Thursday and, you know, they didn't gain any ground. Didn't lose any. But interestingly enough, you're also four and a half games back of the wild card. And most importantly, you're only two games back or two teams back. Excuse me. Now, Detroit and Tampa Bay are right there around where Seattle is, although Detroit's lost a couple of games in a row. Crazy to think that they have to pay attention to the Detroit Tigers now. Imagine if you play. But Boston's still ahead of them by one game, and they have the tiebreaker. So you have to finish with a better record than Boston. And Minnesota is four and a half games up on them, and Minnesota has the tiebreaker. 
Kansas City is six games up on them, or six wins ahead of them, and Kansas City has a tiebreaker. Baltimore, it's not even point worth pointing out, but for the sake of this one, I will point out they're 78 and 58. So the Mariners will not, if they don't win the division, get one of those home series. It's it seems very unlikely. But the wild card, and I would talked about this to my Hawaii enthusiasts on Thursday. The wild card is not that out of reach anymore. Is it likely? No. Is the best path to winning the division, you bet your sweet bippy. But it's not completely rule rule outable. Sure would be nice if they played more games. It's kind of a weird situation because the Mariners only have three games left against teams that are ahead of them, which is kind of bad because that's the easiest way to make up immediate ground, right? But it's also good because the Mariners are playing bad baseball teams for the overwhelming majority of the season. Like, I think that they have two, three series left against teams with winning records, something like that. Certainly not playing one right now. By the way, I did feel kind of bad for Aldegary, you know, making his MLB debut, gets hurt by his defense immediately. It's nice to see the Mariners hit somebody that they should have. So, tomorrow, we got Brian Wu against former Mariner legend Tyler Anderson. Anderson's been good, but I think advantage Mariners. And by the way, Sunday, which will probably be a late video because, well, we'll talk about it on Saturday. But everything good. It's just it's going to be a long Sunday. But they'll face up against Caden Dana, making his MLB debut as well. Listen to the starters the Mariners have over their next few games, okay, that they're facing. Tyler Anderson, pretty good. Caden Dina, Dana. Uh, then they're going to face uh, Isvaldo Bido, JT Ginn, JP Sears, Estes, Kyle Gibson, Miles Mikolas, Andre Pallante, and then Michael King. That's not exactly a who's who of top starting pitchers. You better be able to score some gosh dang runs during these games. And you're facing mediocre at best lineups up until San Diego. So stay positive. You just never know. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. Really appreciate the support. Good win. And great to see a big game from Julio again.